And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer into the temple, coming to us straight from Tin Hat Games, which some of you may recall from the time that I talked with them about Z about Xenoscape, and now coming to us with OSR, Obsolete Shitty Rules, the one and only Alessandro Rivaroli. I'm hoping I got pronunciation right. Yeah, that's good. That's quite I, good. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank you, Medra, for uh, hosting me <laughs> one more time. <laughs> uh, so, I usually so whenever whenever I've done these whenever I've done these kind of things, there's obviously some degree of tradition. Um, <laughs> uh huh. And we are, but we already did the humble beginnings, so. I suppose I, I suppose the best place for me to, okay. for me to start is how this how this idea of doing a aggressive almost 2000 AD like parody of oh, of um quote of quote unquote old <laughs> yeah. school play <laughs> came to be because this this very much does feel like a feel like a uh, feel like a parody that would be right be right out of uh, 2000 AD if you don't mind me making something making a british reference no 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 that, that that is the the right reference the the most right reference you could have thought of uh 2000 idea has been one of the best comic book collector uh that i've ever met in my life pretty mm -hmm. much uh it was also hard to find it here in italy but mm -hmm. you could you could find uh, single stories like that uh and yes uh, that came to my mind a lot of time ago, to be honest. And uh, it all started as a fun game, poverty game about role playing games. Mm -hmm. And um, indeed, it started when I, uh, when I was uh, play testing another role playing game and I started making tables. Mm -hmm. And it was fun making tables for everything. Like, uh, many of us players and uh, the, and game master used to do, uh, but then I came up with the idea: Oh fuck! I can uh, really, really uh, put on table like everything if I want to. And there are games in the past, the old school games, which are really based on that. Uh, so it came to my mind: Why don't I make I create a um, game mechanic? about rolling tables and that and then the idea came to my mind uh just as struck as lightning you know <laughs> well yeah. the, the game as you said is very aggressive yeah i well, can you can tell from the six yeah. start already <laughs> the the other comparison i was going i was going to make was with um, metal herlant or he or heavy metal for oh wow <laughs> for some of us and yeah. yes that is real bad uh, yeah, French yeah. both the magazine mm -hmm. both the magazine and, and the movie <laughs> yeah. both influenced me a lot well uh, you can tell by by those well the yeah. first movie we don't talk about heavy metal two thousand oh no, no, never saw that never saw that <laughs> that doesn't exist i suppose <laughs> um, yeah yeah sure the first one well heavy met heavy metal as a mo as as far as that original movie because it was just because it was essentially an anthology piece that's not exactly something that lends itself mm -hmm. to sequels but somebody decided to try oh, yeah, anyways sure. and uh, well, when you well, have well, a well. when you try and make a sequel to a cult classic you know how this ends up going most of the time Oh yeah, sure, 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 sure. And I'm 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 that kind of I'm that kind of movie, video game, comic book user mm -hmm. that tends to read only stuff that has been printed before uh, the year 2000, something like that. And I've always been. So uh, I'm st I, I'm stuck at, at those times. I would say. I don't ha I don't have a I don't have a cutoff point. And um, Heavy Metal 2000 didn't come out in 2000. 
<laughs> I think it, I think yeah, it came yeah, out a few right, years after right. the original, but it was not good. Oh. Mm -mm -mm. I mean, that's, that's not to say the original was some agree. highfalutin art. We are still dealing with with heavy metal, which was all which was all which was all about um, all about the all about the good old ultra violence. <laughs> I'm a, I'm, yeah. yeah, yeah, ultra violence. Uh, apparently, there was a lot of tits on that uh, mm -hmm. on, on that cartoon, yeah. as the South Park parody uh, used to point out. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah, I've seen it. Um, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And being a and the film being at times a glorified music video, but then again, this was in that point of time when people were starting to get a grasp on this whole music video concept. Because um, oh yeah, sure. On a whim, and, and apparently I... also Elon Musk got a lot of uh, got a good reference from that movie. Since he, he, he definitely sent um, a car to space uh, with, with an astronaut on it. Uh, so just like the, the beginning of that movie. So yeah. it was a big reference for everybody in the 90s and 80s. Well, life imitates art. But I think I will admit, some, I will admit something else that is a... That, um, that I couldn't, I couldn't help, I couldn't help but, I couldn't help but appreciate is that it, it, is that it is go, in the sixth start, and I'm hope, I'm hoping in the full book, it, it, you have, you, yeah. you have a formatting, pre, formatting presentation that is not, that is not trying to do the more, some of the more traditional approaches, you know, two col, two column formats, a four page size, that kind of thing, but instead, instead. Treating each page as a mini poster unto itself. Uh, I think the only game, uh, yeah, the only yeah, game yeah, recently be... that kind of does oh. that is um, Mork Borg, but there's not enough yellow for this. To... Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, well, uh, what we're going to do uh, throughout all the book, the, uh, the complete book, will be just like uh, what you saw in the sixth start. Mm -hmm. uh, also, our artist is Roberto Toderico, which is an international heavy metal artist, as you can tell from the sixth start itself, mm -hmm. and would be uh, the only one artist doing all that book. Yeah. So it would be after each single graphic, each single pagination design and layout. So uh, the book would be astounding also on the uh on the uh, exterior uh on the exterior level uh and well yeah uh, the book will feature many much more tables mm -hmm. if you checked on the on the book in the book in the rules um we just uh went to extreme with old school rules mm -hmm. so they we put them uh at, at their extreme so uh Everything is based on tables. Everything mm -hmm. is randomized in this game. Uh, the, the game master, the game master itself himself, has no power in this game. The book has power. Mm -hmm. uh, effectively, we we started. Uh, I started writing from the Principia Apocrypha by Ben Milton and Lumpkin, mm -hmm. uh, which are very famous uh, in our uh, in our community of old school gamers. You know, mm -hmm. uh, because they set the principle of uh, how old school gaming should be run, uh, and I took those principles and turned it upside down. Let's mm -hmm. say, <laughs> and something very, very, very funny came out of it, which are the Principia Apocrypha, the, the Principia Satirica, mm -hmm. uh, which you can find at the beginning of the uh, of the sixth art. And one thing, one um, one thing that one thing that I cert that certainly I certainly find in find interesting with this is if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, you guys are building this specifically for um one shots. This is not this is not this is not being that's not to say you couldn't do a lengthier campaign, but it's not built with that in mind. It's built one in a one shot oh, yeah, beer and sure. pretzels kind of way. 
Yeah, 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 that's it. But, but, uh, since many requested us to, to, to make um, a, a longer mode uh, for this game, uh, we also planned for longer adventure mode and mm -hmm. also campaign mode. Yeah. Indeed, the game, uh, if played seriously, can also be stretched out into a very long campaign. Uh, but also, also playing it uh, ironically as it should be. Uh, it could be stretched throughout a very long campaign. Uh, during our um, Kickstarter campaign, um, we will uh, also add as stretch goals uh, some uh, full adventures that will last for sure more than uh, one night game. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the fact that checks are operating on a on a rule of six, um, what what um do, aside from the D one hundred that you're using for tables and a bunch of other matters, um, what yeah. particular what particular die what particular die is going to be the all roads lead to Rome? Is it going is it going to be D six D ten? What do you, what do you have in mind? Oh no 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 no! We want to keep it simple and mm -hmm. easy. So just D ten and D hundred. So you're yep. gonna basically need two dice. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, in, in order to play, but the game itself uh, can be uh, adapted to have pretty much every old school um, game mechanics, uh, from uh, be uh, from basic uh, D and D to uh, OSA uh, to uh, um, many more DCC and many more other. Um, uh, old school me game mechanics mm -hmm. since it's very easy and the subtitles tells everything yep. this is just obsolete shitty rules so uh, yeah. <laughs> who cares about, about that just use the rules you see more fit for your gaming night mm -hmm. and and that's uh, and just use the table yeah uh, in fact many people uh, already told us okay the game is fun and all but uh, me and my group are not willing to play this kind of funny game, yet your, uh, your table are fantastic because mm -hmm. they got a lot of uh, original and unique content. Yeah. And so I, I think uh, the, the, the actual um, uh, whole book uh, will be uh, very useful also for uh, all the campaigns that you can have in mind. Indeed, mm -hmm. it will feature uh, 45 uh, uh, tables with a uh, hundred uh, and, and more uh, uh, results in each table. So there will be a table for everything, literally. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, also, I can't, I can't help but have a bit of a laugh that you put, you put in the um, HP values for doors because everybody has that story of trying to kick <laughs> down a door and the rules not letting it happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. You can pretty much break down everything in this game. Indeed, um, uh, as I said, the rules are really easy and simple. Yet there are some uh, uh, some something unique in it too. Uh, like for example, the fact that every time you get hit, uh, you can choose to uh, one of your um, clothes or armor to be hit. Mm -hmm. So it will absorb part of the damage, but uh, of course, it will be destroyed after pretty much uh, s s few hits if it's basic clothing, for example. So the fun part emerges uh, by itself. Since your character, the more your character gets it, the more it will be uh, naked, like with no pants at all, for example, but, uh, but maybe with his, his helmet or armor on. So mm -hmm. <laughs> the fun will be merging from the game from from the the result of the table yeah no need to to prepare uh to prepare the fun no need to prepare jokes everything will come up naturally i do i do remember an acquaintance of mine talking about how he had how he had written books upon books of jo of jokes for his routines and i'm like you gotta write shit down you can't you can't just talk <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, well, and that's also what we all experienced d during our uh, our gaming life. 
I mean, uh, there's no need to, to put down jokes. The jokes will uh, come up during the gaming session. There's always that situation where the uh, game master uh, set this encounter with this very uh, important NPC, which has maybe uh, something ridiculous in it, in his description or anything, and the player just starts having fun of that NPC and ruin the master uh, speech or, uh, <laughs> or, uh, or else, you know? And that turns out to be a recurring joke during the whole campaign. Mm -hmm. So during role-playing games, the fun, uh, as I say, uh, emerged by itself. Yeah. You know? And something I, I do appreciate is the, is the, ca is the, casting, li the casting list is also randomized so that um, you have less of you have less of the problem that ha that happens with casters in ga in games, even old school games have have this problem as well of the caster being a little bit too useful or or um being able to do stuff being able to do stuff that makes other builds completely useless. Uh huh. Um. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. uh, in, in this game, each. Uh, archetype each character well the the full game will feature uh, a table with a hundred archetypes mm -hmm. that you can choose among and uh, each archetype will uh, will have a pre-generated character associated but you will be also able to just get that archetype and um, and, and, and build your own character from uh, from it and well each archetypes uh, as it's own specific powers as you can check from the six start yep. uh, so each character has really unique power uh, which makes the spells just something something more maybe mm -hmm. but uh, having a unique power uh, of uh, special luck uh, or um, of something very unique that even a caster can do sometimes even beyond the fourth wall <laughs> so it's on a narrative level let's say uh it's something really really unique that you don't uh, get in uh, maybe other games you know yeah um uh, one thing that i f one thing that i find interesting with the with the equi with the equip with just with just the um archetypes that you that we see and the whole the whole four leveling thing is unlike a lot of games uh -huh. it looks like you're using xp as a kind of um currency for oh, yeah. people to do stuff with their archetypes oh yeah sure sure sure, sure. uh the, the the xp will be used uh both for leveling up and uh to uh to, to use your special abilities of course uh but there's an additional rule uh, in this game, uh, this rule we didn't mention, which is the most important one, mm -hmm. in this game, uh, it's master versus player. So there will be only one winner at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, the more uh, XPs you use, uh, the more uh, the game master uh, will get them, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, vice versa. So uh, at the end of the game, when the uh, when the dungeon master will uh, will turn into an avatar and uh, and uh, and get uh, into his own story to face the character finally, mm -hmm. uh, it will be more powerful more powerful the, the the more XPs he has. Yeah. So it's also a um, let's say resource management game. Uh, trying to do stuff without expending too much space, uh, but also leveling up when it's time to, it's really important. Mm -hmm. So th 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 there's a game behind the game, <laughs> I would say. Yeah. And we because of, because of that, even though you even though you have the, you have these abilities listed as levels. Because of the one-shot nature, would it be fair of me to say that when playing, when playing, say one of the um, one of the pre-gens in the six start, you have access to all four of them, but yeah. you still, but of course, you still have to spend XP for them. Oh yeah, sure. 
uh, and well, um, you, you start with a certain amount of XP's, but you can't spend XP's whenever you want to level up. You can just level up whenever you earn one or more XP's. Uh, so you just start level one and good luck getting to the other level, uh, not dying before that. <laughs> because the, of course the game is a high, a highly deadly, mm -hmm. uh, but yet that is not is not maybe the end every time. Since mm -hmm. the game also features a death table, which you mm -hmm. must roll uh, every time you die, and the tables tells you what happened to your character. Mm -hmm. So you just s maybe simply die, or maybe you reincarnate into a, a item. Uh, or your spirit stays in the place uh, where your character died. Or maybe you have to do a corpse run, just like in video game with, uh, with your spirit to, uh, to respawn. Yep. Uh, and there's so many options uh, which, which are available. Mm -hmm. So uh, also dying will be a lot of fun in this game. Yeah. Um, something else I found kind of amusing is put is giving... Um, HP and armor values to every single item. <laughs> yeah, that's that's because what we said before. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, literally uh, parry with your clothes, mm -hmm. so uh, you will lose clothes uh, progressing in the game probably. Mm -hmm. uh, so when when it's tough to choose. Uh, am I gonna lose my pants or am I gonna lose my uh, fancy helmet uh, of true vision? Yeah. Well, okay, I'm gonna lose my uh, my stupid pants this time, but yeah, uh, now I'm running around the dungeon with my wiener out. So uh, <laughs> you know. Also, I do I do appreciate that this is a rare case where we, where you don't have a um. You don't have you don't have to do go with the blur go with the what is an RPG blur because let's be honest anybody picking up something like this is gonna have <laughs> so, is gonna have some idea what what a what an RPG is plus in this in this day in this day and age if you if you don't then you're in these kind of circles the fuck's wrong with you <laughs> yeah, I realize man. I realize that's, everybody that's... yes everybody's a rookie at some point but. We're not, but we are not cavemen okay. anymore. We have technology. <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. We also have TV show now that talks about role-playing games. So, wow, what happened to this war? <laughs> yeah, un unfortunately. Did I did I tell you about the did I tell you about the about the um t about how I managed to get a no, a no Mercer sign at at my LGS? Okay. okay. I run. I run one shots at my at my LGS, and there were a few times where people would bring up uh, Mercer's name about and how he'd do things. Which, um, pro tip: don't do that. Or don't do that around GMs because it is very disrespectful, and especially don't do it around someone as petty as me because I will make you pay for it. Um, <laughs> you do good, man. <laughs> but. I I was venting the guy, the guy who runs the place is a longtime friend of me of mine and I was venting to him about how annoying it was that they were saying it and I offhandedly said I swear I swear to God I should put up we should I should have a Wayne's World style sign up on the wall that says absolutely no Mercer <laughs> I come in a week later and he put and he made this sign to make it look <laughs> almost like the as close to the no stairway sign from um from the from Wayne's World. <laughs> so anytime somebody yeah, bring yeah, that yeah, up, yeah, I could yeah, cut yeah, them yeah. off and and point to the sign. Yeah, yeah. And talking about uh, also uh, sequels from movies, also about Wayne World. Mm -hmm. uh, well, the the two is okay, but nothing like the first one. Well, there's a reason I why the say. phrase well, lightning. That's... There's a reason why the phrase lightning doesn't strike twice is a thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. sure uh, yeah. You're right. Anyway, ab mm -hmm. about your tale, uh, yeah. I would say the, these kind of tales are one of the reasons uh, I created this game. Because mm -hmm. we all have tales about toxic players, about toxic game masters, and uh, there are a lot of uh, toxic 
behavior that we saw at the gaming table. So um, one way is to increase the eight and increase the eight by increasing the eight toward uh, these uh, toxic people, mm -hmm. which is kind of okay, but it doesn't get good vibes in our community. So there's another way. And the way is laugh at it. You know, the best way to deal with this kind of thing to me is to make fun of it. So this game is not intended to promote, yeah. of course, this kind of toxic behavior. No, it's it, it, uh, yeah, it is it, a, it's a the other way around, totally. This is it's the reason why I why I said that um, that the true OSR is an aggr is an aggressive parody. And yeah, sure, man. <laughs> I'd say I'd say to to that end, um, I know that I know that'd be tempting to for some folk to compare this game to stuff like Osric or old or old school essentials, or um, uh huh, or or the or geez, why why is its name not why is its name escaping me? But that is but that's not the that's not the game that I was reminded of as I was reading through the six start. The game that I was reminded of, oddly <laughs> enough, so. was Hackmaster. <laughs> uh, okay, 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 I got it, I got it. <laughs> and, and while yeah, Hackmaster is, uh, is, not as, um, is not as um is not as aggressive about it, it is, and uh, it is. Oh yeah, it, no. it is an admitted parody by Knights of the Dinner Table against um AD and D mm -hmm. in general, and just the tabletop scene at the time. Yeah, specifically. It's just that they did yeah, a bit sure. too good of a job, and people sure. played the game unironically. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, uh. exactly. Uh, well, uh, another, of course, is uh, GURPS. Uh, mm -hmm. GURPS is another reference since uh, we got so many table, and you can actually uh, roll for everything in this game. What about uh, Rollmaster? If, if we're going to be bringing tables into this. Uh. <laughs> yeah, and Rollmaster. <laughs> like, I love Rollmaster. I, lo I love Merp, but dear lord, dear lord, all those tables. Dear lord, <laughs> yeah, uh, man. Though I was it... more on the on the Gurp on the Gurp side than Rollmaster, uh, yeah. basically because uh, there's, there was not in Italian where, back when I was a child. Uh, but uh, but Gurps, there was ton of stuff in here, <laughs> so. which is un is understandable because of the because of the nature of GURPS. I um I've had a habit of taking the piss out of cer out of certain um folks who who st who stand that system because they keep insisting to me, and I've mentioned this in the past, that it's the only RPG that one needs. Pro tip. Ah, uh, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> well. Some people got real mad at me when I when I said I'm I'm not br I'm not breaking out GURPS for my next campaign. I don't feel like dusting off my old TI eighty three from when I was in high school. Oh no no no! You know <laughs> that's right. That's totally right. Oh. That's mm -hmm. uh, th that's my opinion too. I mean um, uh, the OSR uh, community, the old school Renaissance community, is I think is doing uh, very good work. Uh, taking old school mechanics and revamping them yeah. with uh, with new rules, with uh, innovations and stuff like that. I mean, the old stuff was really true, and everybody loves it. I played that for so long that okay, now I'm I'm open to a lot of new things. I don't want to play again those uh, old things. I'm My... to play a short adventure for OSC. And honestly, was pretty boring. <laughs> if I'm, I take the same approach to OSR that I do to, that I do to um, games that you that use the to um, old school shooters that use the GZ Doom engine. A pox oh, on yeah. you and your house if you're using GZ Doom to make a. So to make a to make a <laughs> sci-fi to make a sci-fi FPS with demons, uh, uh, unless you're Proteus, <laughs> Proteus is great. But you but there's okay. a whole lot more you can <laughs> okay. do you can do with you can do with it, and even Proteus is I'd hesitate to call it a to to call it a complete Doom clone. It certainly has the DNA, but I would I um but there's a whole lot more to it. 
And when it comes to OSR games, I am not interested in a mm -hmm. slightly cleaned up or slightly modified version of a of AD and D of B, of BX of even White Box. Um, I've spoken yeah, yeah. highly of the in the past about how, about my enjoyment of things like um, Hyperborea. Originally, Astonishing Swordsman and Sorcerers of Hyperborea, but mm -hmm. just changed to Hyperborea because it started integrating science fiction stuff and supplements, and then unifying it with it, with its um, third edition and Adventure Conqueror King system. Aside from the fact that it moves a bit more Mediter a bit more Mediterranean instead of instead of British Isles for its style of fantasy, it puts a lot more emphasis mm -hmm. on the on the end, on the end game, the whole that whole concept of your of you have you have followers at high, at high levels, which didn't which didn't really stick the landing back then. With this, it's one of the central pillars. Oh, okay. And I I get it. It's the th the thing is is that if if you're going to well, be mm -hmm. using old school setup, do do something so it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's just trying to be a cleaned up version of what of what peop of what people were playing in the seventies. That that's oh, always yeah. that's we always been my approach. Now. Honestly. Um, and yeah, of course honestly. the the undisputed king when it comes to that is is um Crawford with um stars without number and worlds without number. As well as well oh, yeah. as Godbound, that guy is an absolute madman. Uh, I've seen that. <laughs> but <laughs> the but just do, just doing even if you just say even if you just do a more histor a just do a more historical take take sometimes that sometimes that isn't enough. Um, I'm I'm always going to be in favor of people who take who yeah. take the old and do and do and do something different with it and. If I were to use a musical analog, um, I'd bring up the, I'd, I'd bring I'd bring up th things like st things like um, Stoner Doom and the and new wave and new wave traditional oh, yeah, when it comes to metal. Like I, oh yeah, I'm a big I'm a big <laughs> I'm a big fan of um, of the of the sword. But I'd but I'd hesitate to say that the sword is tr is is trying to be a pastiche of se of seventies hard rock. Oh. Uh, now I, uh -huh. I I I will miss well, those about guys. music. We can talk. Uh, we, we we can set up another uh, another podcast just talking about music. If, the, if, yeah. if these are your uh, well, your I, likings. I bring. <laughs> I, bring... I, I used to travel Europe with uh, several bands, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the Doom, uh, in, in in the Doom area, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, black metal and Doom. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, talking about once again the true OSR, mm -hmm. uh, well, there's there's gonna be a lot of featuring in yeah. this game, and I mean featuring uh, from the music world. Mm -hmm. Indeed, there are couple of things I would like to point out about our Kickstarter campaign. Since the deluxe edition of the game uh, will, uh, will be in a box containing uh, a vinyl. And that vinyl will contain a soundtrack registered mm -hmm. by some, uh, some influential Italian heavy metal band. Mm -hmm. And I'm also talking about members from huge bands mm -hmm. and we are still dealing with managers from international bands that are gonna uh, do the featuring mm -hmm. yeah That's... in our game and i'm get i'm guessing if, i'm guessing that the tracks for the tracks from that will be available in a, in a digital version as well Oh well, that's the other thing I want to talk to you about, which is uh, we we thought about making a digital version, mm -hmm. but there was a better option. So one of the stretch goal in our Kickstarter campaign would will be the app, the app of the game. Yeah. Okay. So you you can uh, literally use your phone during uh, a, a live uh, gaming night mm -hmm. to randomize each 
uh, on each table. Mm -hmm. uh, it, as you see from the six start, some table also have multiple randomized um, statistic, you know, mm -hmm. like, for example, uh, you randomize a monster, you also have to randomize its age, uh, dimension and equipment, for example, mm -hmm. with just one click on that app, it will, uh, the, the app will randomize everything, mm -hmm. really everything. So it will be very, very useful. So yeah. it's not made to play online, it's made to play live. So it's an instrument you put uh, on the table, you know. Mm -hmm. And the, and um, that is that is going that is going to be an interest an interesting um, approach, especially since there's I still think that there's a lot of potential when it comes to in, when it comes to integrating app work with role playing games that hasn't that hasn't been fully tapped. I mean, a, f a few a few games yeah. will have, say, character will have, say, digital character managers or a, or a dice rolling app. More often than dice rolling app than anything else. But for for a lot of games, that's a, that's as far as they go with the idea with the idea of that kind of integration. So it's interesting that you guys have that in mind. Um, oh yeah, we don't have it in mind. It's pretty much already planned. Sis. Since the uh, the stretch goal uh, would not be that high to reach, so mm -hmm. uh, uh, everybody please click on that campaign when it's time to and support us because uh, we found a uh, a very very uh, good studio. Uh, it's just two guys uh, coding and programming stuff, which are really enthusiastic to do that, and we want to bring this. Also, as we as we, as we said before. Uh, downloading that app just to have the tables to use in your other uh, old school games or whatever will really be useful for uh, all of you role players mm -hmm. now with that with that in mind when it comes yeah. when it comes to when it comes to the full when it comes to the full book, I I know you had a sa a sample module, but do you do you plan on ha do you plan on having a do you plan on doing a similar thing with say a true OSR hex crawl or something like that? Uh, mm, so, uh, what you mean um, with hex crawl? You mean uh, I mean uh, with, with, I mean hex I mean a a hex crawl a a ma a map of a map of hexagons with the events of, with the events of that yeah. of that um, completely randomized. Oh oh that 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 that, that sounds nice and uh, that's part uh, sort of part of uh, something that we're gonna maybe publish later because mm -hmm. uh, even the the full book will will feature all the tables you need to randomize really everything from vehicles to a uh, precious item to um, curses uh, to mutations uh, and everything. There's still something that we it can be added up. Mm -hmm. So we will talk in the future. Yeah. Yet uh, all the adventure that will be unlocked in the Kickstarter version uh, will feature a fantastic map with grids uh, or access, uh, whatever it will be, uh, that will help you really dungeon crawl through the game. Uh, one of the adventure I can spoiler is a mega dungeon. Uh, yeah, I, I, fig I figured yeah. <laughs> that was gonna. Ha I figured that was gonna happen. Um, I suppose. I suppose this is. There's a small part of me that 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 th that thinks that this is the kind of game that would be would be tailor made for a for a dungeon that's on this that's in the same ballpark as the infamous and some would say and I would say overrated Tomb of Horrors. Uh, oh yeah, sure. That would be uh, the worst part of Tomb of Horrors, <laughs> uh, all in once, and the name will be. Um, master Mega Mindjun. <laughs> uh, so it will be set inside the dungeon, which is actually the head of the dungeon master, yeah. and will be huge. That, so that sounds that sounds like the weird that sounds like the weirdest inversion of that 
what of that everyone is John one page game. If you if you ever heard of that one. Uh, what what is that? What's the Every, name again? The game is called Everyone Is John. This was this was a one, oh yeah yeah was, I've heard of that. It was a one page thing. Never played where, that, but yeah. Where the DM is John, and the players are voices in John's head trying to get him to do stupid things. Oh, nice! That's <laughs> really nice. I love this this kind of uh, experimentation with role playing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. There are a lot of ways to do that. For example, in uh, uh, your uh, your uh, which is our uh, superhero, the boys like uh, game, mm -hmm. role playing game. Uh, I wrote an adventure uh, where the players are just like five ads on a single body mm -hmm. uh, of a huge mutant living in the sewers, of course. So all the players can act and talk, but when it comes to uh, acting with their only body, uh, well, there the, the, the can be problems about that. Uh, so the players have to uh, play the whole, the whole adventure uh, trying to do things, but with just one body. I'm pi I'm picturing the a unholy combination of a Hydra and an Etten. <laughs> yeah, sure, <laughs> something like that. It's just yeah, uh, a very weird mutant, mm -hmm. very weird mutant living in the sewers. Uh, you get you have to figure it out, uh, like uh, four meter tall, uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. And the adventure starts when the when these. Uh, 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 society called monster of course mm -hmm. uh found a uh, lost uh, children in the sewer yeah uh, and the classic adventure but with this uh with this twist i would yeah. say um although when you mentioned a dungeon taking place in the in the gm's head what instantly oh, yeah. came to mind is a mo a module that a module that i f i found called dungeons in dragons that name is <laughs> oh, quite nice literal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. That sounds really good. <laughs> you are you are oh, adventuring yeah. in a you're adventuring in the giant carcass of a dead dragon. Oh, nice! So oh, nice. That's so nice. Uh, there's also a map of it. Oh, uh, I had I had I hadn't ch I hadn't checked, but it was giving me flashbacks to Fantastic Voyage or. Um, inner space. Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, sure, sure. I, I'm gonna look for it. I'm gonna look for it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, about that mega dungeon mm -hmm. thing, uh, I, um, I can spoiler. Uh, uh, it would be like uh, a big, weird um, factory mm -hmm. where uh, ideas, characters, and uh, scripts for adventure are uh, um, are created by a lot of workers inside of it mm -hmm. and uh, and then uh, pushed up to the brain part which is the inner part of the uh, of the dungeon mastermind mm -hmm. so it would be a crazy adventure about syndicate creating uh, inside this uh, workers uh, uh, place uh, so it would be really mad really mad uh, <laughs> with characters being created like in cloning station and then they get, they have to go to the gym to get fit, uh, and then they have to learn uh, how to do their things to be the best character for uh, some specific story. Uh, really, really crazy. <laughs> yeah, i i can I can certainly work I can certainly work with that. Uh, now, with that with. With that in mind, what are you shooting for as far as the launch time for the for the Kickstarter, or is that st is that still up in the air? No, 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 no. We are we are all ready. Our communication staff and social media staff is doing a great work, and uh, we can say January will be the month. January for sure will be the month. So the beginning of the new year will launch with the true OSR, mm -hmm. which will uh, uh, break down uh, every concept of good role playing you have. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing what sort of insanity comes out of that. But with oh, yeah, all man, that, with all that said, 
I would like to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness at, that happens around here. Oh, and... your monastery is all, uh, always comfy, so <laughs> glad to be here. And, and thank you. <laughs> anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drink, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!